How do you say this? Tsvistos. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. It, it's it's Kustos. Kustos. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Time of Tide. What's up? Today we are doing what, frankly, we love to do. And, and I didn't make a pun on Frank Moore there, but it, 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 may just, it may just make more sense. But we're, we're just exploring a brand that we don't know very much about, Borna. Yeah, exactly right. Kustos, or as we jokingly have, I've been calling it Savistos just because I, I didn't know they pulled a Bulgari on us. Yes, the BBL Gary. Yeah. That's what yeah, we call that, it. That's right. That's <laughs> now right. This, this brand is uh, completely mysterious to me. I have actually seen uh, an exhibition of Kustos watches at the Frank Muller Watchland. And I saw it in, the, in a loft part of Frank Muller and I went and had a look and I started to discover a little bit more, but we have quite a few in front of us today. Yeah, we've got the new Kustos Metropolitan in front of us, but the fact that you saw it at Watchland actually makes a lot of sense. It does. So the brand was founded in 2005 by a gentleman by the name of Sassoon Sirmakis, who is the son of the co-founder of Frank Miller's group. But there's two people behind Kustos, because there's someone else who's Absolutely. connected to the industry as well. Uh, Antonio Terranova, who mm -hmm. used to design for Tag Heuer, Zenith, Breitling, and uh, Mr. Sirmakis came together to create Kustos. Yes. Kustos is really hitting that spot of obviously the, the really rarefied high end of, of watchmaking and the most desirable brands in the world, your APs, Richard Mills, Patex. They're, they're making watches that are practically inaccessible at this point, which is due entirely to their popularity, but it does create right. a bit of a vacuum or a bit of a void for brands to to, to fill. That's right, whether that be you know just insane retail prices or insane <laughs> markups on those retail prices in the second-hand market, uh, there is always space for someone new to come in and to present their own thing. Yes. Uh, and I think Kustos is, is, is doing that here. And with you know backing from the Frank Miller Group, who does produce uh, some of their higher complicated movements, you know, your tourbillons, your, your repeaters, uh, here they introduce a more everyday piece at a more accessible price. Well, we're talking about tens of thousands of francs here, but in this sort of world of these avant-garde tonneau-shaped watches, uh, it is an entry level. Yes. I feel like these sort of blend this sort of avant-garde design, super angular shapes and tone it down a little, especially, you know, being called Metropolitan, I, I guess that's what they want to do play on here. Uh, some of the other pieces that we've seen in the past really went you know, completely all out. There was a Danny Pedrosa piece, which was absolutely wild. Uh, but these take a more sort of laid back approach to, 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 this, to this style, especially these two here, grade five titanium pieces that we've got. Yes, so let's talk about this collection and what's in it because we have three here. Yeah, yeah, and these three represent uh, just a part of the collection. There's a couple of gold pieces that we do not have in person here, mm -hmm. but uh, they will be very similar to the two we see here. So starting off really with the one that you were looking at, this blue, really nice teak decking sort of dial. 42 millimeter diameter, 51 mm -hmm. mil lug to lug, so sort of classic. Let me try that on wrist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I'm seven inches, so this is, I'm a pretty typical wrist, and that's how we're looking. Exactly, and you've got an articulating first link, which is super important with these uh, integrated bracelet sports watches. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, they just sit. They jut. Great. Exactly, jut. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. The teak dial is interesting because as you move, as you look at it from different angles, it, it really does. It almost it goes looks like solid, it's it goes scalloped. ghost, it goes when, solid. When, when you're looking at it? Yeah, it does. It creates the, the this this illusion of there being an actual scalloping exactly. of the and, dial. And there's quite a lot of depth as well. You've got the circularly grain sub-dial there with the, with the petite seconde. So this is the Metropolitan Petite Seconde. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the full, full name. Yep. Uh, and again, these sort of vertical lines are highlighted by the uh, applied indices as well, which are nicely faceted. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of just got jump. A, quite a steep flange there. Yeah, you've got that flange here just going sort of steeply up just to meet the, the sapphire crystal, which is curved. It's not quite a flat sapphire crystal, and it's a just slightly proud of, of the bezel. So yeah. it, it's simple construction with, with details done done well and really seen in person. It, it, it works. Uh, and titanium bracelets, it's quite light on the wrist, I yeah, would say. Yeah, so 120 grams for both of these here. Mm -hmm. um, you these, just went and weighed them. I just went and weighed them because <laughs> I thought, you know, titanium, it's always interesting to see how they would compare. And for a large watch, that is quite light. You have to think that a 40 millimeter, you know, regular sports watch in stainless steel is usually about 150 grams. This is larger and lighter. Mm. Uh, and again, they haven't used too many polished surfaces here. They've used them quite sparingly. 
uh, a little yes, bit Yes, a fully, fully brushed bracelet with fully with brushed center links. But you do fully see brushed this bezel. very, very fine highlight on the outer edges, which also yeah. matches the highlight. There's a polished the bezel, bezel around That's the right. mid case here. That's right. And screwed in crown guards, which is a little bit of a utilitarian touch. Exactly. And that, I think, just brings it back to that whole avant-garde piece. They, mm -hmm. Something needs to you know, look uh, slightly industrial, I, I, I guess. So we have a choice here, though, Borna, between this, this teak blue and then the, I think this, this is the hero uh, piece on their, their main campaign. Exactly, exactly. If, if this is not quite avant-garde enough for you, and, but you still want something that is wearable on a day-to-day on -day basis, then the, the skeletonized uh, uh, Metropolitan here in green would be, would be your pick. Put mm -hmm. this one on, see, see, how, see what you think. Yeah, super, again, in the hand, almost sort of surreally light. It's, well, I it's say 120 not... grams. This one is actually one gram lighter. Now, wow, I don't, know if, now, I, don't, I don't know if that is a slight discrepancy <laughs> in, in, our, in our scale, but uh, maybe that's the lack of a dial. I'm not sure. The thing that I love about this one immediately is this triple blade small seconds or it's running a, seconds. It's, it's really cool. And mm. they don't choose to highlight one of, the, one of those blades to act mm -hmm. as an actual seconds hand, so it's, it's quite symmetrical as well. And what's interesting here is that the, the bridge is, forms a sort of a, somewhat of a dial. Like you, it is actually uh, a pat, like a design that, that creates some that's sort that's of solidity. Right. It's almost like a spider web, and you yeah. can see they really smartly use it to integrate uh, the movement into it as well. So mm -hmm. the movement needs to be held in, p in, in place somewhere. Yes. And the crown tube is also hidden in that sort of, uh, I wouldn't in call the, it really a lattice, but in, in the pattern of, of, the, of the green bridges on the dial. And also under the three index, which is very clever. Yeah. And the movement itself, what are we talking about, Borne? Because so there's a little bit of mystery on this. We're looking at the CVS 410 movement, so 50 hour power reserve, 31 joules. There isn't too much information on the Kustos website about this particular movement, mm -hmm. but in the past, they do manufacture some of their movement components in-house. They do some of the decoration in-house as well. But again, like we said earlier, with that Frank Muller backing, they're really able to uh, manufacture some really higher complicated pieces. So you talked about accessible for this sort of an offer. What are we talking I about did, here? I, I'm, I'm shuddering. I, I did. So with the, <laughs> with the blue teak dial, uh, we're looking at 12,900 Swiss francs. Mm -hmm. uh, for the skeleton, it is 19,900. So there's also two gold pieces in this collection, yep. uh, five in red gold. They'll be uh, they'll match these these designs. Mm -hmm. No pricing on those, or so pricing on request. Okay. Uh, so yeah. What about this bad guy? Now this one here, and uh, well, since we're mentioning price, why did you choose that to put on? It's so I, I've I've never really gotten to handle a sapphire case in person much before. I've seen some at, at some gatherings, but you know, you never really get to experience someone else's watch. And if you if you hate it, you can't tell them. Um, <laughs> but good thing is, I actually don't hate it at all. It mm. is not my thing. You know, I, I would have never picked this out for myself. But I get it. You, mm. know, you, you get it in hand, and it's like, wow, this is a single piece of. Machine uh, uh, <laughs> crystal. Um, <laughs> you've, had it, you've had it all morning. <laughs> I have had it all morning. Yeah. So using the same movement that we see in both of these with the same skeletonization. And the interesting thing about a sapphire case is how it changes the case lines dramatically, because here in the titanium versions, there's clearer lines because it's a solid solid material. Whereas here, I think what this does for me is it softens off this tonneau case even more. What's the price of this compared to the titanium? So this one will sting a little more. 37,800 <laughs> Swiss francs for this one, which, you know, it's a highly technical case with a nicely finished movement. And we have a blackened uh, movement on the back and then of course this sort of dragon green, like exactly. metallic green. Exactly, and if we have a look at the, the back of the movement, you'll also notice a teeny tiny QR code there, yes. uh, which I actually have managed to scan, even though it's quite small, and it just gives you some uh, data about your particular watch. Oh, that's cool. So all of these are limited. This one will be 50 pieces, these yeah. two are uh, 200 pieces each, with the mm -hmm. red golds being 25 pieces each. So yeah, it, it just makes it unique to you. From a distance, this is obviously from a club, but on the wrist and in the hand, I really can't think of another case shape that's that's really identical or, or even really close to this. It's a it is a tonneau shape, but with a different rounded sort of edge to the corners, and the case itself is quite unusual and quite different. You've you've hit the nail on the head here. So they've taken avant-garde, they've taken classic, put put it together, and they made it work really well. Thanks for watching another journey of discovery at Time and Tide. It's been fun. <laughs>